The first units of North Korean troops are already in the Russian Federation. Namely, on October the 23rd, 2024, they were spotted in the Kursk region, according to Oboz Revatel media outlet. The main intelligence directorate of Ukraine explained how Russia is preparing Koreans for war against Ukraine. In particular, Moscow will provide each North Korean with 50 meters of toilet paper and 30 grams of soap per month, according to established standards. The soldiers sent by Pyongyang are being provided with ammunition, bedding, winter clothing and footwear, as well as hygiene products, the statement said. It is noted that the training of the North Korean army soldiers who arrived in Russia is taking place at five military training grounds located in the east of the aggressor state Baranovsky, Donguz, Ekaterinoslavsky, 24th and 249th. Several weeks after being allocated for the approval of the North Korean military that Russia intends to involve in the war against Ukraine. According to estimates by the main intelligence directorate of the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine, the number of North Korean military personnel transferred to Russia currently amounts to about 12,000 people, including 500 officers, including three Pyongyang generals. Moscow has appointed Deputy Minister of Defense of the Russian Federation Yunus Bek Yevgurkov responsible for monitoring the military training and adaptation of the North Korean troops. The Kremlin places extraordinary hopes on the North Korean component in the war against Ukraine and the global confrontation with the West. The main intelligence directorate of Ukraine concluded, Ukraine has since shared intelligence with NATO about North Korea's military involvement and requested data from alliance members. NATO Secretary General Mark Rutte said that the participation of the North Korean military in the war against Ukraine on the side of Russia would mean a significant escalation. Later, it was reported that South Korea was considering providing Ukraine with military and intelligence assistance in response to North Korea's sending its military to fight on the side of Russia. South Korea may consider providing weapons to Ukraine depending on the extent of military cooperation between Russia and North Korea, states South Korean President Yoon Suk-yeol. He stated that South Korea will not sit idly by in response to North Korea sending troops to Russia. If North Korea sends special forces to the war in Ukraine, we will provide support to Ukraine step by step and consider taking the necessary measures to ensure the security of the Korean Peninsula, Yoon said. According to him, South Korea adheres to the principle of not supplying lethal weapons directly, but in this case, it may reconsider the issue. This will depend on North Korea's military activity. The Republic of Korea will never sit idly by and will take the necessary measures step by step in coordination with the international community depending on the development of military cooperation between North Korea and Russia, he stated. The spokesman for the Israeli army said on Thursday that the army killed a Hamas commander who was involved in the killing and kidnapping of Israelis in southern Israel. Muhammad Abu Itawi killed Israeli women and men who were in the Nova party in a cruel and barbaric manner, Hagari said. In his briefing, Hagari refused to say when Israel might attack on Iran, adding that now the army is dismantling and capturing Hezbollah faculties and weapons in Lebanon while continuing their operation in Jabalia in the northern Gaza Strip. Israeli forces have repeatedly returned to Jabalia, a densely populated urban refugee camp dating back to the 1948 war surrounding Israel's creation. The North has already suffered the heaviest destruction of the war and has been encircled by Israeli forces since late last year. Israel ordered the entire population of the northern third of Gaza, including Gaza City, to evacuate to the south in the war's opening weeks and reiterated those instructions this month. Israel dramatically escalated its attacks on parts of Lebanon on September 23, killing nearly 500 people and wounding 1,600 in one day after nearly a year of skirmishes along the Lebanon-Israel border between Israeli troops and the militant Hezbollah group. Israeli ground forces invaded southern Lebanon at the beginning of October. More than 2,574 people have been killed in Lebanon and over 12,000 wounded in the past year of war, according to the country's health ministry, and around 1.2 million people are displaced. Most of the population fled last year, but around 400,000 people are believed to have remained. On October 7, 2023, 
Hamas-led militants blew holes in Israel's security fence and stormed in, killing some 1,200 people, mostly civilians, and abducting another 250. Hezbollah began firing rockets, missiles and drones into Israel, drawing retaliatory airstrikes, Israeli ground forces invaded southern Lebanon at the beginning of October. אנחנו ראינו את חמאס מנסה להשתקם וחוזר והופך את ג'באליה למעוז טרור. צריך להגיד שבצפון הרצועה יש עוד מחבלים. וחלק מהפעולה שלנו עכשיו הוא גם להרוג את המחבלים האלה. ג'באליה היא מעוז כזה, ואנחנו עכשיו מפרקים אותו. לנו יש תוכניות. אני בוודאי כאן, מעל הבמה הזו, לא אתן, לא את העיתוי, לא את המקום. ולא את האופן שבו אנחנו נפעל בהתאם להנחיית הדרג המדיני. אנחנו נעשה מה שנכון ומתי שנכון. עד כה תפסנו יותר מ-3,200 מטענים וכ-2,500 טילים נגד טנקים, RPG, משגרים וטילי קורנט. בנוסף נתפסו רחפנים, אפודי לחימה, קסדות ותחמושת רבה. חלקם הושמדו במקום וחלקם הועברו לחקירה ולתיעוד ולשימוש באמצעות היחידה לפינוי שלל שבאגף הטכנולוגיה והלוגיסטיקה. כמות אמצעי הלחימה שאנחנו מאתרים ממחישה את חשיבות הפעילות הקרקעית של כוחותינו להסרת האיום על יישובי הצפון.